It's also Paris is a really great place because there's a really still a really interesting thriving Yiddish cultural scene. There's still Yiddish theater that's happening there. You know, there's still people who are translating books from varieties of languages into Yiddish. Um, you know, the 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 Ring and the the Bibliothèque Medem are doing amazing work. You know, like teach, there's still Yiddish courses and and the programming that they're doing is 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 really wonderful. The, the, the Troim Theater is doing amazing Yiddish theater, you know, not only in Paris, they're traveling to other places in Europe too. Um, and it's really exciting um, what people are, are doing. A colleague of mine um, uh, who works for the, the, the Arbeiter Ring, Arez Levy, is, is, is like, you know, doing amazing translations and part of the scene and writing and doing all this stuff. And so it's exciting to me because I think we there's two things that I think is, is exciting to kind of be a part of and be in touch with is like one we didn't I don't think we knew the extent to which Yiddish culture really like thrived and flourished in, in, in France and and I, I think for most people they still don't realize that it's that that it's happening there right that there's something really um, exciting about what remains and 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 what people can really kind of tap into and, and be a part of there. Um, you know, the Maiden Bibliothèque is still the largest repository of Yiddish books in all of Europe, and that's amazing, and that's in Paris, you know? Um, uh, the, the, the contents mostly survived the war, um, the, the, the books. Um, so, yeah, I think, that, I think that working with these materials, and I, I even met um, uh, one, one woman, uh, Eva Govavi, who... Um, who died shortly after I met her, but she was a member of this singing group that I write about. Uh, I met her in her apartment, and like it was amazing that you know that I could still do that. And there were people who you know she was. I remember vividly me meeting with her, and she was very. She had just turned 101 when I met her. Um, she died when she was, if I remember correctly, she was 104. She died about two years after I met her, um, and. Uh, when she learned that I was there to talk about the chorus, about the Yiddish folk score, she like perked up, she started singing. It was like a really amazing encounter. She, at that time, she was living in this apartment that from what I understand, she'd lived in for many years in Pigalle, which is in the north part of, of Paris near Montmartre. Um, and uh, it was just really amazing to like have, to be able to have these encounters in this place, like not far from where she would have performed, you know, decades earlier. That singing group actually began in 1930, and it lasted. Um, I think their last performance is in the, the around the 1980s. So they they went well far into the the post-war period. Um, yeah, it's been it's been really amazing, and you know, it's it's not a terrible thing that I have to go to Paris all the time. <laughs> People always ask me, why do you do Yiddish in Paris? I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Part of my work is hanging out in cafes. Like, I mean, seriously, this is, this is you're asking me why I do Yiddish in Paris. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been really a remarkable uh, experience kind of being, being in touch with the sources there and then also um, really being able to, 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 to transmit some of this information to people. It's been, it's been pretty, pretty, pretty fun. <laughs>